Hi. Welcome. This video will set you on the path of the greatness. If you do it, I want to show you how to think, but it's up to you to actually do it and to do it often enough to make it a habit. So if you play a lot and you your game has plateaued and it's not getting any higher. This is the video that's going to put you on the path to take your game up two, three, four notches. It's really up to you on how much you put into it. So here's an insight on how a pool player is thinking while they're running out the game. All right, here's the table after the break. Here's the cue ball. Here's the one ball, two ball, three ball, four ball, five ball, six ball, seven ball, eight ball, and nine ball. Question number one to ask yourself, can any or all of these balls be made from center table? And the answer, if we look at it, well, I mean, you can't help it. For You're stuck with the way you have on the one ball. So can the two ball be made for center table? The answer is yes. Can the three ball be made center table? Yes. Four ball? Yep. Five ball? Yeah, but we need to get a little bit further to the breaking side of the table. To come up for this six, naturally, the six would be straightened. The side pocket from center table, we can make the 7 from center table, we can make the 8 from center table, and we can certainly make the 9 from center table. All 9 of these balls can be made from center table. So, you should play the center table strategy, right? Well, it depends. The answer, as you know, is yes, they can all be made from center table, but some of these wind up a little bit difficult from center table. Um, like, especially the eight ball. If we get center table on the eight ball, we're going to have a tough cut on the eight to get back on the nine. Center, exact center table on the five would have us going three rails back on the six. We don't want to do that, so we'd have to... So now's the time to tweak that strategy. And what it what everything depends on is your level of confidence. And to be 100% honest with you, as I always am, it's never a question. My confidence lately has not been sky high. So here is the pattern. I choose to run after tweaking the center table strategy. All right, here's the table with the pattern. Yeah, it looks like a bad science experiment, doesn't it? You'll get used to doing this, and you'll see it real simple as long as you follow these strategies. Here's the table without the pattern, and here's the table with the pattern. Now, the right thing to do here is to probably pause it and just look this over really good before you go any further. Okay, the cue ball winds up here almost on the rail for a shot on the one. Um, I'm going two rails bounce out for center table on the two. While shooting a two, I'm bouncing out for center table to shoot the three. Now, on this three, I could have went center table to get on this four ball, but that's a bit of a difficult cut. I'm bouncing off this rail and then back in. I have to come down this side of the table. And I, I'm kind of fearing getting behind this six ball because this rail is dead. So I come up short on the four ball and wind up right here. And... This is just like this one ball shot where I'm just going two rails and bouncing out. Not for center table, but to get straight in on the five. Because the five does pass the eight ball for this pocket here. 
So let's go back to the three ball and we come up short on the three to keep from risking getting behind the six and then dealing with this difficult cut shot on the four to bounce it up for a shot on the five. So everything center table until I get to the three. Um, and like I said, this four ball is just like this one ball shot if you look at it. Um, I'm just I'm just coming up short on this one too, and I'm not going center table, but just looking for a straight in shot on this four on this five ball because the six ball is sitting right in front of the pocket. So so far everything's working out. I I kind of got off the center table strategy, but there's reasons for it. And um, I could draw this. I could draw the cue ball off this four and bounce up off this rail, but it just seems like too much work. And because I already have my stroke warmed up, and this worked on the one ball, it's going to work on the four, so it's not a problem. It, it come up, it, not exactly straight in, but a bounce out will, get, will still keep me straight in on the six. And lately I've been working on my stop shot, and the, unlike my draw shot, my stop shot is working very good. And I've been doing that to build my confidence, and... To focus on my and keeping my stroke straight. Uh, if you haven't seen the stop shot drill, go back and look at it. In fact, I'll post it right here, right now. It's up in that right hand corner of the screen. That's a link to the stop shot drill that will help your stroke, your confidence, your rhythm, and everything else. It's a great, great drill. Uh, so I'm pulling back a little bit on the six ball to get. A straight in stop shot on the seven another straight in stop shot actually I did have a little bit of an angle here and I had to put a little bit of an English to actually make a stop shot and, and you'll see where I'm getting a bit nervous when shooting this eight but it's uh, I wind up stopping it and I'm shooting the nine for a pretty easy shot in the corner and it just bounced off the bottom rail or the top rail whatever you want to call it and uh, the game is mine that's what's going on here, and this is how you have to think. You have to find the pattern by first thinking center table, what's going to work and what isn't going to work, and then tweak it to your liking from there. So if you get off center table strategy, you should, you should like, if you get, like I got off on center table after shooting at three, but I'm still shooting to get back to center table. And, I'm at, and by the time I get to five, I'm back to the center table strategy. Then it's best for me just to shoot stop shots. You don't want to draw this back to center table on this eight. Because I think we already mentioned that that's going to leave you a difficult shot on the eight. And, and from where the nine is, we'd have to shoot the eight in this corner. And again, it just seems like too much work. So... We got off the center table, then we got back on the center table, and then it's, we just decide to abandon center table altogether and just shoot stop shots for the last three shots. So that's it for the grass. Let's move on to the actual game. All right, well, we know what we need to do. Um, before we shoot the one, we're going to pause for a graph and cut right about here. Just a little refresher coming up right now. So with everything we just planned out in the back of our head, let's proceed with the run out while thinking four balls ahead. Uh, the one to the two is just a two railer bounce out to center table for the two. The two, the two balls a bounce out, just one rail. For center table on the three. The three is a little bit different. We're going three rails to come up underneath the six ball. To shoot this four ball, two rails just like the one, except we're coming in for a straight in shot for five in this corner. Alright, we're shooting the one and we're coming out two rails for center table on the deuce. And we know what we want to do on all the balls on the table, but we're just going to push four balls ahead, and we're going to cut right there. All right, so here's where we are on the two, and we got to where we want it to be, and we already know what we want to do on the two, on the three, 
and on the 4, so what are we doing on the 5 to get to the 6? Now, if we come up a little long, we can always shoot it in the side. If we come up a little bit short, it's going to bounce out naturally uh, for a straight-in shot on the 6, as long as we don't slam it. Uh, that's it. If we come in straight in, we can just stop it and still have a straight-in shot on the 6. So let's proceed with the 2 ball. Alright, here we are back at the table getting ready to shoot the 2. There's something that bothered me on the 3 ball. But before we shoot the 3, let's cut to a graph and proceed. All right, we're in line according to the plan, and we already know what we're doing on the three. Everything's going as planned. We know what we're doing on the four, and we know what we're doing on the five. What are we doing on the six? Well, the plan is to get straight in on the seven. And we wind up here. Um, so if I just stop it, it's, it's a hair off center, so we have to come back just a little bit, just to, just to draw off on a right angle. Uh, it's a stop shot, but because we have a tiny bit of an angle here, and we can cheat this big old pocket, yeah, we just need to skedaddle just to the left, just a little bit. So let's proceed. All right, here we are back at the table getting ready to shoot the three. We're going to push four more balls ahead. Yeah, something, something ain't right here. I'm a little bothered by something. Not sure what it is. I'm still a little bit afraid of getting behind this six ball accidentally and going too long. So I had to pull up. Pretty far short for a long shot on the four, but it's okay. And before we shoot this four, we're going to cut to another graphic. So here we are again, and we're in line with the plans. We know what we're going to do with the four ball. We're just going two rails, just like we did on uh, the one ball. And we're trying to get straight in on the five to get straight in on the six. What are we doing on the seven? Oh, we're trying to get straight in on the 7 for a stop shot on the 7. For another stop shot on the 8. That's the plan. Alright, so now we're back in shooting at the 4. i got to rearrange some furniture before I proceed here. I'd probably play this 4 to the 5 a little bit different than most people would. But a lot of that's coming from my confidence being down. So there's a two railer just like the one ball shot. And we're not exactly straight in. Came up a little bit short. But before we shoot this five, we're going to cut right here to another graphic. Is your instinct telling you it's getting easier? That's good. We didn't exactly get straight in on the 5, but just stun it, and it'll bounce out, and you're still straight in on the 6. We already know what we're doing on the 6. We know what we're doing on the 7. What is it that we're doing on the 8? And it's just a stop shot. We've already determined that if we stop on the 7, we'll have another stop on the 8, and we're just taking this semi-long shot on the 9. That's the safest way to play it, and that's what we're doing. And here we are shooting the five. So that worked out well. And before we shoot this six ball, we're going to cut to another graphic. All right, we're still in line. And we know what we're doing on the six. We know what we're doing on the seven. We know what we're doing on the eight. Now, what again are we doing on the nine? Oh, come on, man. You know what we're doing. Yeah, if that's not a no-brainer, I don't know what a no-brainer is. We're shooting the nine in the corner for the win. Here, here's the good news. All your thinking is over. Or, well, you still have to concentrate, but you, all planning is done. You know what to do, and now you just have to do it. There's four balls left on the table. One, two, three, four, bang, it's over. But as you'll see, a tiny issue, actually it's a big issue, a big issue arises later on in this video on the 8, 
So I'm just going to let it roll until we're about to shoot the 8, and then I'll stop it right there, and I'll pop in, and I'll explain it. That's it for the grabs. All right, let's proceed with the 6. We all know the plan from here, so there's going to be no more graphics in this video. This is it. All thinking is over. Unless. Got straight in on the 7. This is just a simple stop shot. But you're going to see me walk behind the 7 and double check that if the stop shot is going to be straight in on the 8. And I determine it is. But, I don't know, something must have been wrong with my game. Ah, you see it did come back a little bit. Well, that, let's go back and check that out. Watch, keep an eye on the cue ball, forget about the show. That hair that it rolls back, just a hair. Right there. Did you see it? Should I zoom in on it? This eight ball not exactly straight in. It's a hair from being straight in. So in order to stop this ball and to keep from getting myself on the rail, if I try to stop it, I'm going to get on the rail. If I just put, if I don't put any English on it at all, or just bottom to just stop it, it's going to get on the rail. I can't go forward on this shot because it's liable to scratch in that corner, the same corner that I'm shooting the eight ball in. And that's just an insane thing to do anyway because uh, it, it would take a miracle to get back on the nine for a decent shot. So that's out of the picture. So what I have to do on this ball is to put a little bit of right hand English on it. Not much, about a quarter of a tip. So I'm already putting bottom on it to get it coming backwards, get the cue ball rolling backwards, and right before it hits the eight, it's it's kind of skidding before it wants to roll forward. It's in between rolling backward and rolling forward. It'll stop, <coughs> but just a speck of right hand English on it. And now the problem with that is it's going to put a speck of deflection on it which we get into in another video and it's going to throw the eight ball into the rail that English is going to transfer to the object ball and throw it off the path so we have to aim it a little bit fuller than we normally would and again it's just a hair but this is the hair that determines if you're going to rattle this ball or make this ball. Just the hair. So we're compensating here for the English. And uh, it's, it's very, very dangerous unless you practice it a lot. And lately I've been practicing it a lot. And let's see if the practice has paid off. I can say it's not exactly straight in. And... We all know nobody wants to be on the rail shooting a nine ball. And you can see my reaction there. I nailed it. And put that in slow motion too. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Hey, that was a crossroad for me. If I, if I rattled that ball, I'd I might have lost my mind because, like I said, I've been struggling with my game. And I, my confidence has been down, and that was like a do-or-die moment for me. So let's roll the rest of the video because the air conditioner just came on. And uh, shoot this nine ball. So you, now you know everything the player's thinking when they're running out. And you also know how much uh, concentration they're dealing with and why they don't always look 
like happy campers. Um, if they're running out, they're happy. And it shows when they make that final nine ball of the match. Uh, you, you'll see such a relief. And, and it's because of all this incredible amount of focus. Uh, and you probably also know why the smart players figure it out and become pros and the dumb players you know, kind of get left behind. It takes more than raw talent. You have to, you have to be able to concentrate at a very, very, very high level. I mean, extremely high. And you have to keep it. And some guys get a little pissed off when you break their concentration, and you can see why. So hopefully, I gave you some insight on how to think uh, when playing a racket nine ball. And um, hopefully you'll take this video and you'll put it to work for yourself. And uh, trust me, your game will improve. That's If you do this, you have to do it. Um, you have to do it until all of it just becomes like second nature. And then you'll get it. And then you'll have such an incredible amount of respect, if you don't already, for these pros and what and what they're doing and what's going on inside their heads. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. This video is going to be a bit longer, but it's a lot more detailed. Um, we're not going to do every video like this. It's just I was in the mood to uh, get into it. Uh, peace, everybody.